so welcome everyone. Um, this is Corey Westfall. I'm the CEO at Mobile Assistant and so glad everybody could join us today. Um, we are going to be recording this uh, this webinar today. So if you um, have to skip out a little early, don't worry, we'll be sending a, a follow-up email with the details that you can watch at your convenience. Um, so today we're gonna we're gonna have a little different type of webinar. Um, you know, as everyone that's on this call probably knows, Mobile Assistant is um, in the financial technology space. And so we do a lot of webinars with other technology partners. Uh, we talk about different ways that technology can help advisors, uh, not only what we're, we do as, are doing as a company, but how we work with our partners in the technology space to try to make your life a little easier. And what I really wanted to do is bring something a little different to the table uh, for this webinar. Um, I really, I, met, I had met uh, Dr. Jack Singer um, a, a few months ago from a colleague of mine, and I thought it was really interesting uh, what he was doing to help advisors. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, Dr. Jack Singer is our guest today, and um, he is a professional sports psychologist. Um, he has worked with three Olympic gold medal winners, um, hundreds of professional and world-class athletes. Um, he's taught the psychology at psychology departments for six universities, uh, including the Air Force Academy. And so in 2008, uh, Dr. Jack pivoted his career to really take all that amazing knowledge that he had from the sports psychology standpoint and really apply it to how we can possibly help uh, financial advisors. Um, now, as a professional speaker, Dr. Jack, he, he goes around the country as a keynote for a lot of at a lot of advisor conferences, um, and he works and consults with a lot of large advisory firms. Um, from my perspective, I was really intrigued uh, by what Dr. Jack was doing and what he was providing advisors because of my background. Um, unless you're, you know, a good friend of mine or or uh, or family, you probably had no idea I actually played Division One tennis, and. When I talked to Dr. Jack, uh, it really it brought back a lot of memories of different techniques and tactics that I used in my training growing up uh, to try to help me be the best at uh, my tennis career. And sports psychology was definitely part of it. And um, everything from visualization to repetition and really just be able to really um, allow yourself to be the very best at that sport at the time, which was tennis for me. Um, I can honestly say that sp the sports psychology kind of tactics and skills that I learned definitely definitely followed with me in my professional career. And it's helped me in a lot of different ways throughout the years that really isn't sports related. So I thought that was really interesting that Dr. Jack, uh, he's one of the only psychologists that I met that's actually working with advisors in this way. And so I asked if he would come on and, and uh, mind sharing some of his thoughts and, and ideas uh, to our advisor clients. So hopefully today you'll, you'll learn something new. Um, I know I'm gonna be listening intently because I'm really anxious to, to hear what Dr. Jack has to say. Um, afterwards, I know he's got a few things he's got to offer uh, for everybody that's on this webinar. Um, but without you know further ado, Dr. Jack, I, I'd love to introduce you to our to some of our clients here today and and let you have the stage. So welcome. Thank you very much, Corey, and uh, and the whole team at Mobile Assistant, which uh, from my research is a superb aid for advisors. And thanks for inviting me uh, to attend, and thanks for coming, all of you, to attend this very valuable program. Why do I say it's valuable? Because I'm going to give you information that will impact each and every one of you. Uh, you'll all see yourself in the, some of the things that I talk about. Uh, and as Corey said um, earlier, I worked with a lot of athletes over my 40-year career. And what you're getting today is a piece of the proven blueprint or framework for building resiliency and thriving during challenging times. The same blueprint that I've used with three Olympic gold medal winners and hundreds and hundreds of elite athletes um, during that long career. Uh, and, you know, like athletes, I consider all financial advisors to be champions, but most of you never really live up to your full potential um, because of lack of confidence or lack of uh, or self-doubt or mainly the reason that most financial advisors, just like athletes, never live, work up to their full potential, their championship level potential is because of stress. And today we're going to talk about cutting edge psychological research, showing you how to finally take charge of stress and minimize it regardless of the challenges you face. I'll speak for about 30 minutes and then if you have questions, simply 
um, put them into the chat box, or if it's a personal question you'd rather ask me on the side, you can email me at drjack at advising the advisors, A D V I S O R S dot com. And you can use that for the other bonuses that I'm going to be giving you. DRJack at advising the advisors.com. I'll provide you with three or four other bonuses just for coming today. So my plan today, ladies and gentlemen, is to teach you the number one cause of any stress that you'll ever experience. Because how you deal with stress is one of the most important determinants of how you'll perform in your career, but also it will even determine how long you live. In fact, I have a client event that I do for advisors called How to Live Much Longer Than Your Kids Hoped You Would. So it's a tongue-in-cheek title for a very serious subject called, you know, the psychology of life extension. I really teach your clients and their guests how to live longer and better. So you can imagine how that packs the house. Everybody wants to learn that. What else will I do today? I will teach you how to engage within a warp speed mental toughness method for quickly reducing stress, self-doubt, worry, or anxiety whenever these sad emotions creep in, and they creep in for all of us. By the way, I was using a warp speed technique for years, not since uh, Trump came up with it to use for his vaccine. Um, and in fact, in my book, The Financial Advisor's Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide, there's a whole section on warp speed techniques. By the way, another bonus, if you're interested in that book, it's a $37 book, but if you email me, I'll send you the e-version for 15 bucks. It'll be probably the best book you've ever read on um, 77 techniques to reduce stress in your life. You can share it with your family. Everybody can enjoy this book, The Financial Advisor's Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide. So in short, I'm gonna teach you how to uh, release the potential of success that I know lies within each one of you, but gets buried under stress and all of the things that go along with stress. Now, we all think we know what causes our stress. For example, maybe you think your stress right now because of COVID is caused by confusion about whether the economy is gonna be reopening or is it gonna close again? Uh, uncertainty regarding post-election, what's the market gonna be like? What are the changes coming in tax policy, regulatory policy, et cetera? Maybe you're dealing with difficult clients during these challenging times who are panicking about their portfolios. Maybe you you're think your stress is caused by the complexities of managing different portfolios, given market unpredictability, information overload, the breadth of product choice, et cetera, et cetera, compliance issues, fiduciary issues. You may be surprised to know, ladies and gentlemen, that your stress is not caused by any of these things that I just mentioned. You're probably saying, what? I have a lot of stress because of the market. I have a lot of stress because of confusion about what's going to happen with the economy. I have a lot of stress dealing with difficult clients. No, you don't. You don't have any stress dealing with any of those issues. Your stress is not caused by events or situations that take place in your life. Stress is caused by the conversation you have in your head about those events. This has been the biggest discovery in the field of psychology in the last 50 years, that it's not situations and events that cause people to have negative emotions and attitudes and behaviors. It's the conversation they have in their head about those events. And the good news is you can control those conversations. You just need to learn how to recognize them and then learn how to control them. And that's a big piece of what we're going to do today. So your internal conversation about your concerns about whether the economy is reopening or not, the internal dialogue you have about the uncertainty of the post-election with possible changes in tax policy and regulatory policies, your internal self-talk as it relates to dealing with difficult clients. These are the things that either cause stress or don't cause stress, depending on that conversation. We know that most of the deficiencies, limitations, and problems that people have are essentially rooted in their self-talk. I've been doing private psychotherapy, uh, not only with athletes, but with all kinds of people for the last 50 years. And we know that it's the conversation you have in your head right before you start developing a certain attitude or emotion that is the cause. So that makes the whole course of training and in the coaching I do with advisors, it's much quicker now because we don't have to worry about you dredging up things from your childhood that cause you to be stressed or depressed or anxious or worried or angry. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with what you were saying to yourself 10 minutes ago. So once we understand those emotions, where those emotions come from, it's really easy to fix the problem. And my work with advisors uh, takes a matter of weeks rather than months or years. 
Let me give you an example of all of this from my own life. It was a gorgeous day in San Diego, and my wife and I were boarding a plane from Maui, where I was fortunate enough to be invited to be the keynote speaker for a, an advisor association. And everyone on the plane is excited and happy, of course, because they're all going to Maui. They're looking forward to a great vacation. Uh, uh, it was a beautiful day in uh, June, and everything's wonderful. The plane takes off, and my wife, who's sitting to the left of me at the window, I'm on the aisle, gets up to use the restroom, then she comes back and takes her seat. Then I get up to use the restroom, and I come back, and I sit down on the aisle. Across the aisle from me, a young woman is feverishly writing on one of these uh, napkins that comes, you know, on the airlines when you order drinks and things like that. And she keeps looking at me while she's writing. Now, my fantasies are taking off here. What would this woman be looking at me for while she's writing a note to herself? Maybe this is a note to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't had a note passed to me by a female since sixth grade. In fact, it's so rare, I can remember who passed it. Sally Benelli passed me a note in sixth grade. I haven't had a note passed since then. And I'm looking at this woman and saying to myself, I'm old enough to be her grandfather, number one. And number two, can't she see I'm with someone? But my fantasies are taking off. I can't wait to see what she could possibly want to send me. And here's the note that she ultimately passed to me. Sir, I think you'd like to know that the toilet seat cover is hanging out of the back of your pants. Sorry to embarrass you. What? Oh, my gosh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a choice at this point. The situation doesn't cause any emotion. It's the conversation about the situation that causes the emotion. So I had a choice. I could say, oh my God, I'm mortified and embarrassed. I can't look at this woman the rest of the trip. I've got to pull this thing out of my pants here. Uh, I'm going to look the other way for six hours on this plane, just face my wife in the window, which would have been horrible. That was one choice. The other choice was, wow, I can use this speech. I mean this example in every speech that I give from now on. What a great example of how it's the conversations we have in our heads that make all the difference. So I said to her, don't worry about this young lady. You have actually done me a huge favor. You gave me an opening to every speech I give from now on, including the one that I'm gonna give in Maui. So <laughs> you see, it's the way, it's what you say to yourself about situations that determine the result and determine the uh, attitudes and the emotions we have. And a lot of these habits that we've developed in terms of our self-talk are based on what I call iceberg core beliefs. Now, why do I call them iceberg core beliefs? Because only a little bit of it is above the surface in our conscious awareness. Most of it is below the surface. Subconsciously, it's been built into us since we were children or adolescents by well-meaning people, but uninformed people like our parents, some of our teachers, other people, who teach us these things that don't really work in our best interest. Here are some examples of iceberg core beliefs that I'm sure most of you can identify with some of these. Asking for help is a sign of weakness. We're all products of our past history. Since I've always been this way, I can't do anything about it. There's a right and a perfect way to do things and anything short of that would be catastrophic. So I need to strive for perfection. Everyone who knows me, believes that I'm more talented or smarter or more successful than I really believe I am. And it's only a matter of time before I prove to them that they were mistaken and I'm gonna be embarrassed and mortified. So that's just a small example of the kinds of things that are built into us, many of us, when we're very young. Another one is avoid confrontations at all costs, fly under the radar, don't make waves. These are all unfortunate habits that drive our internal talk. And our internal talk determines whether we're going to be stressed or not. So you're not a prisoner of your past behavioral habits or even your DNA. You can modify your mindset by understanding the belief system habits that you've developed and change those to ones that are healthy. So the most important skill that you can learn for both your business success and your overall health and even your longevity is how to manage your stress. And you manage it from the inside out by taking charge of your internal dialogue, that internal self-talk, and eradicating poisonous, self-destructive, toxic self-talk. So are you a hoarder of more, of more negative thoughts or positive thoughts? Whichever ones you hoard grow into trees and then forests. And most of us, unfortunately, have many more negative thoughts flowing through our mind uh, every day than positive thoughts. 
Examples of toxic kinds of self-talks is anything that starts with what if, the two worst words ever put together in the English language because they're almost always followed by something negative or I wish I didn't do that or I shouldn't do this or I hope I don't do this. You know, like Corey was talking about if we take tennis or golf, a simple example of this is, uh, you know, I hope I don't double fault if it's tennis or I hope I don't hit it into the water if you're a golfer. And neuroscience teaches us that every thought we have, whether positive or negative, chemically and electronically transfers to every cell in the body instantly. That includes our muscles. So if you say, I hope I don't double fall, or I hope I don't hit it into the water, you've now alerted your brain that there could be a dangerous situation coming up because it doesn't know the difference between a lion attacking you and you telling yourself, I hope I don't hit it into the water turns on the fight or flight nervous system, tightens up your muscles, and now the opportunity for you to hit it in the water is much greater because your muscles are tight and the swing is different. It's the same whether you're an athlete or whether you're a financial advisor. If you're tightening yourself up 30, 40 times a day because of negative thoughts that are going through your mind, you're impatient because uh, people aren't getting back with you as soon as you'd like. Uh, you have to wait in lines to get food delivered to you. Um, you, you're stuck in your home 24 seven and your children and your partner want your attention and you wouldn't be doing that if you were in the office. Um, you're worried about what the future holds in store and trying to keep your patients um, thinking positively when you don't think positively yourself. You're doing this 30, 40, 50 times a day. Every time you do that, you're turning on the fight or flight nervous system and that has negative consequences for both your ability to perform uh, as an advisor for your ability to think clearly and rationally and your ability to stay healthy. Let me give you some examples of that. Uh, we have about 60,000 thoughts a day that run through our mind. The vast majority are negative and lead to self-doubt, worry, insecurity, lack of confidence. Negative emotions resulting from toxic self-talk wire into our brain a thousand times faster than positive emotions in order to protect us. It's from the old brain that we had when we were first developing. It's a survival mechanism when we have to hunt down our food and avoid dinosaurs and saber-toothed tigers to stay alive. So negative talk is self, self-talk is normal. They're remnants of our old lives. But we need to change that because each time we have a negative thought that goes through our mind, it changes chemically and electronically everything in our body and our internal um, pharmacy changes where we're producing negative toxic hormones that can affect us um, physically. And the other thing that happens when we do this 20, 30, 40 times a day with negative thoughts is that the body is set up so that when you turn on the fight or flight nervous system, it shuts down systems that are not necessary at that moment so it can marshal all the energy to saving your life. But one of the systems that it shuts down is your immune system because all the energy that goes into building your immune system is not needed if you're facing danger. And again, your brain doesn't differentiate if dealing with a difficult client is facing the same danger as facing a lion, it turns it on automatically. That's the default situation. So every time you have negative thoughts running through your mind, you're shutting off the immune system for that period of time. If you're doing that 30, 40, 50 times a day, you think that that can impact your health? Absolutely. And let me give you some examples. Even being stuck in traffic, dealing with your subordinates, dealing with your assistant, whatever it is, if it's negative thoughts, it leads to shutting down the immune system for that period of time. So think about this. If you're really in danger, then blood needs to leave the GI tract and go to your arms and legs for the fight or flight situation. So if 30, 40, 50 times a day, you're shutting, you're turning on the um, the fight or flight nervous system and shutting the immune system, blood is constantly leaving the GI tract when it shouldn't be doing that. That leads to um, nausea, energy loss, chronic digestive problems, including diseases like gastritis, colitis, and irritable bowel syndrome. Over the years, I've had hundreds of referrals from gastroenterologists for people with gastritis, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, because they can't find a cure for these people. The cure is in the thinking. It's not in anything physical that's happened to them. Secondly, since muscles are always tightening up whenever you have negative thoughts and you can't even visualize that it's happening automatically, that can lead to muscle spasms. It can lead to headaches in your neck and back. It can lead to migraine and tension headaches, to your jaw clenching, 
TMJ problems, all of those things. A third example, and there's literally hundreds of these, I'm only gonna give you a few of these. The rest I give when I teach your clients how to live past 100, um, is every time you turn on the fight or flight, glucose spills into the bloodstream to give you the energy for fight or flight. Well, if you're doing this 30, 40, 50 times a day, unconsciously turning this on, and each time glucose is spilling into your bloodstream, you think that might contribute to diabetes? Of course it does. And to other kinds of problems like hypoglycemia. And your blood pressure goes up and that leads to cardiovascular problems. So we can literally look at any system in the body. And if you're constantly worried about things and giving yourself negative self-talk, you are either causing or exacerbating that disease or illness, which is why doctors frequently just treat you with drugs they don't really fix the problem. The source of the problem is your thinking. We know from the studies of placebo effects, for example, how powerful your mind is on the body. Placebo is when, for example, they developed this vaccine for COVID, they had to give a randomly selected half of the people in the test sample sugar in their uh, sugar water in their uh, vaccine, nothing that could possibly help you in any way. And the other half of group, neither group knows which one they're getting, the other half group gets the actual vaccine. Well, why is it that 20 or 30% of the people getting sugar water seem to get better and they don't get the disease? No matter what they're testing, 20 or 30% of people get better, whether they're testing drugs for depression or anxiety, how could 20 or 30% of people getting sugar water get better? Because they think they're getting the drug and the thought alone transfers positively into very ex excited and happy, future looking people, I'm gonna get over this illness, this disease, this emotional problem, and it actually makes the internal pharmacy start working and doing this for you. So the good news, as I said, is you can learn to recognize when you're getting these negative self-defeating thoughts and how to change them. Let me quickly tell you about a client of mine, an advisor we'll call Tom. He was actually ready to quit the business. Someone referred him to me right before he was ready to just look, go look for another occupation. He couldn't understand why he had the same education as other people in the office. He thought he had the same talent uh, as other people in the audience. He certainly had the same amount of experience, but he wasn't producing. His AUM was much lower than other people in the audience. He didn't know why. And he had trouble falling asleep. It bothered him. He started feeling like a failure. His wife told him that Sunday nights were very difficult. He was restless because he had to go into work the next day. Um, he had stomach problems. He got impatient with his wife and children. And I determined very quickly that Tom had a very negative mindset and he had all kinds of toxic trigger thoughts based on his history. So what we did was we developed a new way of interpreting negative situations. And Tom engaged in what I call my mental toughness routine that I'm gonna teach you right now. It's one of my warp speed techniques, mental toughness. And within a matter of three or four weeks, Tom turned this whole thing around. So. That's the, an example of how quickly this can work. Mental toughness is a skill that uh, separates good performance from championship performance. It involves looking at every challenge as an opportunity. It involves the ability to bring your A game consistently rather than your A game by luck every so often. It's the ability to bounce back quickly from any adversity, such as dealing with difficult clients or a pandemic or in the case of Corey, when he was a division one tennis player, uh, and I know how difficult it is to become a division one tennis player because my son played division one tennis. Um, so what is, the, what is mental toughness? It's you make a shot that you're unhappy about or you lose a game that you're unhappy about. Is that gonna lead to a continuation of losing or are you gonna take that and turn it around immediately and bounce back quickly from adversity and find a way to start winning? You know, I can give you an example from my son was losing 5-0 in tennis in an important match. And I looked at him and my wife looked at him. My wife said, I can't watch this. He's going to lose the match. He'd already lost the first set 5-0. He was down 5-0 in the second set. My wife said, I can't face this. I said, you don't have anything to worry about. She said, what? I said, I did hypnosis with him last night just for a situation like this. Look at his body language. He's coming off after sitting down, after going down 5-0, he's got the body language of a winner. My son turned it around. He won 7-5 in that set. He came back and won the next set, came back in the tie break and won it. 
And that's how you turn things around. That's how you use mental toughness and you take your A game uh, whenever you have to. So here's what it is. It's a, I'm gonna give you um, a seven step routine now that works like a charm in anything you're doing, whether it's golf or working in your financial advisor career. Whenever you experience a negative emotion, anxiety, fear, worry, upset, impatience, anger, depression, you name it. As soon as you recognize that you have that emotion, ladies and gentlemen, step one is think about what you are thinking about right before you felt that emotion. So you're feeling anxious, for example. What was I thinking about? My assistant told me that one of my clients is very upset because I didn't sell something for her before the market crashed and she wants me to talk to her. That's what caused that emotion. Step number two, we need to stop these negative trigger thoughts dead in their tracks. How do we do that? The best method I know, and it's a simple method, is to wear a rubber band on your wrist. The kind I recommend are the loose ones that come in the mail. It's called the number 64 rubber band. Uh, and you snap away as many times as you have to until your brain says, okay, I'm going to stop this thought. I don't like this pain. Step number two, you've stopped the thought. If you're playing tennis, you're not gonna snap rubber bands, but you can slap your thigh. You can do all kinds of things to have the same uh, response. Step number three, we need to calm the body down through some deep diaphragmatic breathing, breathing through your diaphragm. Now, how do you know if you're doing the right kind of breathing? You fold your hands over your stomach, and when you breathe in, if your hands move out because your stomach's expanding, and when you exhale, your stomach moves back in, that's breathing through your diaphragm. Every professional musician and singer knows how to do this. You can teach yourself how to do it just sitting in front of the TV. The best way to do it is breathing in through your nose deeply to the count of four, holding it for four. Then you blow out through your mouth like you're blowing through a straw to the count of seven. So let's practice it. Put your hands over your stomach and breathe in through your nose now. Two, three, four. Hold it. Two, three, four. Now out through your mouth. Two three, four, five, six, seven. You keep practicing that, you'll be breathing through your diaphragm, much more relaxing kind of breathing. That's step three. Step four, I need to challenge these crazy thoughts that I had. For example, where's the evidence to support my anxiety producing thoughts? What's the probability that what I'm afraid of will actually happen? By the way, if you'd like a list of these challenges, because I'm speaking much faster than you can take notes, just send me what you want, this or anything else, the, the mental toughness routine, drjack at advisingtheadvisors.com. A third way to challenge the thoughts, could I be exaggerating this situation? Have I experienced this before and it didn't work out so badly? So in the case of I got anxious because my secretary said that Mrs. Jones is on the phone and she's really upset about her portfolio. Think, have I ever dealt with Mrs. Jones in a situation like this before? How did I handle it? Did Mrs. Jones continue to work with me as an advisor? Yes, so I must have handled it fine. Start thinking, do this correctly. Are my conclusions based on emotions rather than on facts? Am I assuming the worst that will happen without any evidence? So that's step four. Now, step five is really the most important step. Dispute these thoughts with healthy dialogue. So let's, for example, and you can write these down in the beginning. I even have a template to have you write these down. I have a course, by the way, on developing the mindset of a champion financial advisor. The only course of its type, and you can get 12 continued education credits for it. If you want to know more about that, email me, drjack at advisingadvisors.com. The course is filled with templates the same way as Mobile Assistant has a template I'll mention it to you in just a minute. So if you want any of that information, just let me know. Uh, if, say, the question in your mind or the thought in your mind that led to the anxiety was, is the economy going to be reopening or are we going to close down again? The market's going to crash, et cetera, et cetera. Change that to something like I remain focused on my core investment values and I realize that I have the skills and tools to help my clients' portfolios grow despite ongoing foreclosures, uh, openings, closings, uh, resulting in market volatility. I proactively do virtual meetings and provide information for my clients to help them feel safe. That's an example of how you can change to healthy talk from toxic thought. Let's say the toxic thought was, how will I manage this client's portfolio with all the market volatility, digitization, 
information onload, onload, overload, I'm sorry, you can change it to something like the following. People need my wealth management and planning services now more than ever. And with mobile assistance commitment to the human touch in my dictation, for example, I can document all of my client interactions and become much more efficient in a structured way. Um, I have templates now through mobile assistant that I can use to provide a roadmap through the dictation process, which will help me review and assess what else I need to do with this client. So that was an unabashed commercial for mobile assistant, <laughs> but it's a good example of how you can change your internal dialogue. So the key to all of this is, oh, and the final step is you do another deep breathing. So you anchor this with another deep breathing at the end. So you develop this mental toughness routine, which leads to increased confidence, to lower stress, to fewer behavioral mistakes, to enhanced physical and mental health. What could be better than that? Tom did this, he developed a new group of emotions, and all of this uh, was very, 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 very confidence building for Tom. Um, I'm gonna conclude in just a minute, but I wanna just remind you of these bonuses. The biggest bonus that I haven't mentioned yet is I will take a sampling of five people who are on the call today who write to me and say they're interested in this. I'll give you a free coaching session. No obligation, no nothing. I'm not gonna to try to sell you anything. Uh, my free coaching session with anything that could be bothering you uh, because I wanna do this for mobile assistant and their clients and potential clients and so forth. So just email me at drjack at advisingtheadvisors.com and I will send you, uh, uh, I'll, I'll pull the drawing and I'll tell you whether you win a free coaching session. Number two, if you'd like to get my book, it's usually $37, The Financial Advisor's Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide. Uh, for 15 bucks, I'll send you the e-version of it. Just email me. If you want a 20% discount on my 12th continuing education course, actionable skills to quickly develop the mindset of a champion, financial advisor, absolutely. And finally, remember this, unusual and powerful client event, how to live much longer than your kids hope uh, you would. This is the psychology of life extension, tax the house and almost guarantees you new clients because everyone wants to invite guests and relatives to that. Just email me if you want more information on that. So in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your kind attention. I see that everybody stayed on here till the end, which is really gratifying. Uh, there's two types of speakers you can do without those who never stop to think and those who never think to stop. So at this point, I'm <laughs> gonna stop. This is the pivot point for your success and health. And I'll now open it up to any question. No question is silly, so don't be afraid to put a question in the chat box. Well, thanks, Dr. Jack, that was fantastic. Uh, I already feel more relaxed uh, going through the breathing routine. So <laughs> that's that's really great. Um, Dr. Jack, you had mentioned a couple times um, and mentioned your email. Uh, just for everyone that's on this webinar, uh, please know, don't worry if you didn't get it and you, you forgot to write it down. I'm going to send a follow-up email to everyone that's on this call today, um, giving you information on how to get a hold of Dr. Jack if you wanna learn more about the things that he offers. Um, and so we'll make it real easy for you. So nothing for you to do. Uh, just look in your inbox. Uh, we'll get you some more information. Um, you know, one of the comments that I want to make, Dr. Jack, is, is you talked um, a lot about obviously the mental health and how it can actually affect people physically. And I think, I really think that that's something over the last year here that everyone can relate to that I, I don't think everyone really was very conscious of the effects that it was going to have, all the stress um, that everyone has been under, um, having to deal with all this adversity and all these unknowns, it, it absolutely affects everyone differently. And from a mental standpoint, how important it is to, in my, in my mind, one of the most important, important tactics to, to use is you mentioned really being present and not worrying about the what ifs and the what could possibly happen because there is so much unknown. And I think that's one of the things to, it's a really great takeaway from your presentation today is just as much as it is, it's difficult to, to kind of keep the things out of your, out of the, keep them out of the periphery the, and stay focused on what you're really trying to accomplish in the present day. That's one of the things that I try to do that I think helps a lot to just try to stay focused and positive. So that's one of the takeaways I got, Dr. Jack, that, that was great. Well, to, that's a really great point because when people are constantly worried about what happened or what didn't happen, uh, they're always looking in the rear view mirror. And you know, if you're driving a car and you're constantly looking in the rear view mirror, you crash. So you gotta look forward to see where you're going. 
uh, and instead of worrying about what didn't happen or what could have happened. And to your point, uh, one of the other things that happens, I mentioned several illnesses, but a lot of people, including financial advisors, and during these times, are having trouble sleeping. They're having insomnia. Well, why is that? Because if you're under stress, and remember, you're only under stress if you're thinking toxically, especially at bedtime, worried about things that happened or what could happen or what are you going to do about this tomorrow? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If you're having those kinds of thoughts when you're trying to fall asleep, your brain thinks again, it's an emergency, turns on the fight or flight. And one of the other things that happens is the, the chemical and uh, adrenaline squirts into your bloodstream because you need that to be alert if there's a real danger. Well, if you're squirting adrenaline into your bloodstream at bedtime because you're worried about things, that's why you're not sleeping, ladies and gentlemen. So the two kinds of insomnia that most people get are they can't fall asleep or they wake up between two and three in the morning. That's because of the adrenaline and you're not controlling your internal dialogue. So when I work with someone, I teach you how to do that as well. And I, just like with athletes, I make hypnotic recordings to help you to fall asleep and to help you to turn around this thinking because we know that the mind controls the body. It's all very powerful. So thanks for that uh, reminder. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you talk about hypnosis, um, you know, everybody might think about that as being some magic trick out there, but I want to tell you, it's a, it's a real, it's a real tactic and it's a, it's a real skill to learn how to util, utilize that, that type of thing. And hypnosis can help so much in just reinforcing the positive um, you know, thoughts that you, that you would have. Um, I just remember when I was, when I was growing up and doing some of my, some of my training, one of the things that I would do is close my eyes and really try to visualize what the success was going to look like the next day. You know, you don't close your eyes and think about the bad things or the things that could possibly go wrong. You think about the positive things. Um, I know golfers do this a lot, uh, at the, on the, on the pro tour where they close their eyes and visualize the shot before they hit it. And I think that it can be very, very useful to translate that into your everyday life. You know, um, just taking that positive energy and the things that you really think are can go very well and just imagine it happening and and use that to really help you to keep yourself de-stressed and and just go out there and know you're doing the very best you can every day because what's the alternative if you're gonna if you're gonna always just expect things not to work out uh, i tell you sometimes they just don't and so uh, dr jack i think that's i think those are really some really great uh, great tips and and i might take you up on the hypnosis thing maybe you can help me well it's powerful technique and, and uh, Henry Ford said, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right. In other words, whatever way you think is what's gonna happen. So why would you visualize and think about negative stuff unless you realize I'm doing that now and that's gonna have a negative impact. So hypnosis has been a powerful tool I've used my entire career uh, with athletes and everyone else, uh, advisors and everyone else. And uh, I'll tell you, Tiger Woods, when he was 16, his father brought him to a hypnotherapist because his father believed in hypnosis way back then. And Tiger Woods, I saw him in his very first golf match in Las Vegas. I was there when he played his profesh first professional golf match. And when I saw him, his eyes were glassed over. And I said to myself, this guy has gone through self-hypnosis and he is gonna be something to deal with. And that started right back then. So it's a powerful technique. It's not like stage hypnosis where you act like a chicken and all that baloney. <laughs> This is visualization, and you're right. Every golfer visualizes what's going to happen on the shot. Every professional golfer who's smart visualizes it, what the target is, and so forth. And my son used to tell me when he would get, get into a match, and I hypnotized him the day before. He said, Dad, it was like I was already there. I saw it. It happened just like I laid it out in my mind. So that's the key. Well, Dr. Jack, this has been great. I, this is just the tip of the iceberg, I know, when it comes to the different, uh, you know, the different skills that you can teach advisors. I encourage everybody on the call, uh, reach out to Dr. Jack if you have some interest in learning more. Um, but it's been, this has been great. I've, I've really enjoyed it, Dr. Jack. It's definitely been a little different type of, of, of webinar for us to present to our clients. But um, just know we want the best for you out there. Um, everything that we can do as a company to try to make your life easier. I think the skills and some of the tactics that uh, Dr. Jack has presented today might help you as well. Um, so please look into it more and, uh, and best of luck to you out there. I will be following up again with an email uh, that will also include a recording of this if you want to share it with any of your colleagues. So thanks so much, Dr. Jack, for joining us and, uh, and everybody have a really happy holiday, okay? 
Thank you very much.